Hello and welcome. This is Mouse Gunner, and in this video, I'll be covering straight blowback operated systems in firearms. And to do so, I'm going to be looking at a couple different examples. The first example we're going to look at is the Walther PP. If you're more familiar with the Walther PPK, that would be a later variation of the Walther PP, and this is most well known for being the uh, firearm of choice for James Bond for a number of years. Let's go ahead and get into talking about what a straight blowback operated system is. Now, this is by and far away the simplest of all the operating systems for firearms. And that's because unlike some operating systems for firearms, it is not a lock breech design. So the barrel and slide are not locked together during the operation of the firearm. Instead, it's the weight of the slide or bolt and the strength of the recoil spring that keeps the action closed during the operation of the firearm. So let's go ahead and x-ray down here and take a look at this. Now, one of the key factors is that the straight block blowback operated system has to keep the action closed long enough to keep the gas pressures in the chamber at a lower level before that action begins to open. And why that is important is because if we look at that x-ray again, as you ignite the cartridge, the uh, firing pin strikes the uh, primer it's going to burn the propellant within the cartridge. This is going to build up pressure, and that pressure is going to push the bullet down the barrel. That much you might already understand about uh, the operation of a firearm, but another element that happens is that pressure pushes hard against the uh, case walls and pushes them up against the walls of the chamber. This is a good thing because it gives you a nice gas seal and doesn't allow for any of that uh, that expanding gas to leak into the rest of the system. The problem with those forces pushing on the case walls is that if the gas pressure is too high during extraction, the period when the cartridge is being removed from the chamber, the pressure pushing out on the case walls can cause the parts of the case no longer supported by the chamber to bulge and in extreme cases even rupture, possibly dangerously so. How a straight blowback operated system achieves this, as I said, is just by having a heavy uh, slide or a bolt and a strong recoil spring to overcome that momentum. As there is an equal and opposite reaction, the same force that's being applied on the bullet to push it out the barrel will also press against the slide trying to force it to the rear. But as physics also teaches us, a heavier object takes more energy to get moving. So as the bullet is very light, it goes out the, the barrel very quickly. But as the slide is very heavy, in comparison, it takes quite a bit more time to get that enough energy build up to push that slide to the rear. And that's the whole principle of how a straight blowback operated system works. If you have enough mass and you have enough strength of a recoil uh, spring resisting that momentum, you can keep that action closed long enough to get those gas pressures low enough for you to open the action safely, at least in principle. But one of the big drawbacks of this design is the fact that you need that mass and that strength of that recoil spring to overcome. But before we get too much into the, the details of, of, of the upsides and downsides of the design, let's go ahead and take a look at the the system in action. So we're going to fire off. This is going to be just normal speed. So it's going to be very quick and you're probably not going to really catch everything that happens. All right, so that was operation at normal speed. We'll slow it down to half speed. So again, you might not have caught everything that was going on here. So we'll slow it down to 10 times speed. I'll fire it off one more time and then I'm going to break everything down for you guys. Okay. So now we can start the process from the beginning. And the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to have the trigger pull, which drops the hammer. The hammer will strike the firing pin, which in turn strikes the primer. We have ignition. And our equal and opposite reaction is going to push the slide to the rear. As the slide is being pushed to the rear, our recoil spring is being compressed in between the slide and the mounting point of the frame with the barrel. So you might be able to see this kind of uh, darker green here. This is the mounting point of the, uh, the barrel. You can actually see a pin here that also pins it in place. As we go to the rear, eventually the uh, ejector will push the spent case out of the ejection port and the slide. 
And then as we reach the full extent of our rearward travel, the recoil spring is fully compressed. And as there is no more rearward momentum, it will release its tension and bring the slide back forward. We're going to then strip a new cartridge from the magazine and push it into the chamber. And then the action will close again and we're ready to fire as the trigger resets. And that's a, a pretty much a full cycle of a straight blowback operated system. Now one key element of a lot of straight blowback operated systems is that the barrel is fixed in place. It does not move during the operation of the action. As we saw there, and again, if you just eye the barrel, nothing happens with the barrel. Now this is one of the key advantages of a straight blowback operated system. If you were to compare it to, for instance, a short recoil operated system where often the barrel will tilt or move in some way. This keeps the barrel fixed and as a result may lead to more inherent accuracy. The next example we're going to be looking at is an Intertech Tech 9. Now this had some notoriety for being used in Hollywood films at the time period. Big Trouble in Little China comes to mind. Uh, Kurt Russell using uh, one in that film. As well as being used by or supposedly being used by gangsters in the late 80s, early 90s because of the low cost of the firearm. Uh, in any case, uh, let's go ahead and look at some differences of what we have with the Intertech as opposed to uh, the Walther PP. So the first difference we're going to have is the fact that this uses a bolt, not a slide. But it's going to work on the same principle of a the weight of the bolt and the strength of the recoil spring keeping the action closed until the gas pressures are at a safe enough level. Another difference that I'm not going to really cover in any detail, as it is probably going to be the subject of a future video, is that this is a striker-fired firearm rather than a hammer-fired firearm. Uh, so you will also get to see that in operation as well. But first, I'm going to start with this view. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the Walther PP. I'm going to do it at normal speed. I'm going to slow it down to half speed. And then we're going to look at it one more time, a little bit slower. So as we begin, we're going to have the trigger pull being the first thing, just as before. But this time, that trigger pull is going to release the striker. And the striker is going to come forward, hitting our primer and igniting our cartridge. And then, just as we had before, the bolt is going to start to move to the rear. At this point, I'm going to come out a little bit more so we can see the bolt in detail. The bolt's going to come to the rear, compress that recoil spring here, which is actually a dual recoil sp spring. You see one here and one there. And as we get to into that rearward travel, we're going to uh, eject the cartridge case out the ejection port and the receiver. We're going to compress that spring fully and then as that spring has been compressed and we strike the buffer in the rear, the tension of the spring is then going to push our bolt forward, stripping in a new cartridge into our chamber and we're ready to go. So overall, same design principles, just done in a slightly different way. As I said, you're not using a slide like what you'd have on a handgun. Instead, you're using a bolt like what you'd have in a rifle or uh, a machine pistol as this is. Otherwise, exact same principle. Now we'll talk about the strengths and weaknesses of a straight blowback operated system. Now we already talked about one of the strengths, and that's the fact that the barrel is fixed in place and does not move during the operation of the action. Now this is not the only system that does that. Uh, gas operated systems, for instance, also have fixed barrels that do not move during the operation of the action. Now there are differences between straight blowback systems and gas operated systems, but you're not going to really have that inherent accuracy edge over a gas operated system. But when you think about handguns instead, most handguns are either going to be straight blowback operated or short recoil operated. And the majority of short recoil operated systems and handguns are going to be of the tilting barrel design. So not only will the barrel tilt, but it also moves slightly during the operation of the action. 
So in that comparison, you do have a slight inherent accuracy edge with a straight blowback system over the majority of short recoil operated systems. The main advantage of a straight blowback operated system is its simplicity. There's not that many moving parts, it's easy to manufacture, and as a result, it's cheaper to manufacture. And that makes it the most affordable system of all the systems when comparing it to other firearms in its category. This affordability is one of the main reasons the straight blowback systems are some of the most popular systems throughout history. With that said, let's now talk about the disadvantages of straight blowback system. And the main disadvantage is the fact that it's the weight of the bolt and the strength of the recoil spring that resists the pressures that build up in the chamber. As those pressures increase and the power of the cartridge increase, so too do the weight of the bolt and the strength of the recoil spring also need to increase. As the weight increases in the bolt, so too does its mass. As its mass increases, it takes up more space. That space creates bulk. And in the end, as you get to more and more powerful cartridges, the bulk and weight of the firearm just becomes too much to be practical. The strength of the recoil spring becomes so strong that if you try and manually operate the charging handle to open the action, it just takes too much strength for it to be practical. And that's kind of the end limits of what a straight blowback operated system can do. When you're talking about handguns, in most cases, the most powerful cartridge you see in a straight blowback operated uh, handgun is 380 Auto. Now, there are examples of handguns that use more powerful uh, rounds. But I think if you look at high points, that's a good example of what happens when you attempt to design a handgun that is a straight blowback operated system that contends with the more potent and higher pressure rounds. The handgun ends up being so bulky and so heavy that although it works, uh, does it really compete well with other operating systems that exist out there? For instance, short recoil operated systems can achieve the same results but with a lot less weight and bulk. So that's where you start to lose your advantage. But as long as you keep a straight blowback operated system with uh, utilizing cartridges that are a little bit lower on the pressure uh, scale, it can handle it just fine. And as a result, it can be one of the more uh, cost effective means to design a firearm. In any case, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. This is Mouse Gunner, signing out.